हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू आर डेली करंट अफेयर्स वीडियोस आई होप यू ऑल आर हेल एंड हार्टी एंड योर प्रिपरेशन इज अप टू द मार्क एंड यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग विद फुल फोकस एंड एनर्जी और राइट सो टू एनहांस योर प्रिपरेशन टू एड मोर क्रेडिबिलिटी टू योर प्रिपरेशन एंड चैनल योर हार्ड वर्क इन द राइट डायरेक्शन प्लीज हैव अ लुक एट द सिक्सटी डे क्रैश कोर्स फॉर द आर बी आई ग्रेड बी एग्जाम्स लॉन्च एट आर वेबसाइट all right it has many features including a personalized study plan and a comprehensive pyq analysis and a lot of uh, other features as well all right you can also download our app for uh, regular exam updates and daily quiz very easy and at hand access to our videos right so the link to both our crash course and our app is down in the description box below do check it out once okay guys so let's just start with today's current affairs uh lectures all right so we have first question over here we have how much is the expected merchandise trade deficit in the financial year 2022 all right so answer this very very quickly it is a very interesting topic for today all right because it is a major achievement for the indian economy it is a blockbuster achievement for the indian economy all right so answer this question correctly and quickly so the correct answer over here is 188.2 billion dollars right 188.2 billion dollars is the expected merchandise trade deficit for financial year 2022 all right so by trade deficit what do you mean by trade deficit very simple and a plain explanation if the merchandise merchandise imports are over and above the merchandise exports a country uh, faces trade deficit and if um, if merchandise exports are you know more than merchandise imports then there is a situation of trade surplus all right so despite this trade deficit why is the situation a blockbuster performance for the indian economy let's have a look so very important fact over here is that 400 billion dollars of merchandise exports have been recorded for financial year 2022 all right so if you look at this chart we have 303.5 billion dollars of merchandise exports uh, hovering around this time period all right uh, the merchandise exports uh, have been around 300 billion dollars only all right but indian economy uh, aims to become an export led aims to achieve an export led growth all right export led growth is very very crucial for our economy and uh, despite the covid crisis despite the russian ukraine crisis the indian economy recorded a 400 billion dollar merchandise exports which is very important and crucial so let's just have a look at the top performing uh, export categories all right so first we have our engineered go engineering goods we have uh, petroleum products we also also chemical and pharmaceutical products have been uh, have seen a very good performance uh, this year all right and gems and jewelry are also very important okay so these are the growth uh, factors right and also you should note that it is a serious achievement for not only for atmanirbhar bharat but also continuous efforts by the government of india uh to make international trade more and more hassle free how you know basic issues that used to delay the trade that used to delay custom clearances and all those things have been done away with because ministry of finance ministry of finance came in collaboration with national informatics sector and launched many platforms and one of which trade facilitating and you know business promoting platform is ice dash all right i encourage you all to look up ice dash learn about its features so the main aim over here of ice dash is to make custom clearances more hassle free right make custom clearances more hassle free all right so ice dash is a very very important scheme when it comes to export promotion right also we have a high rate of engagement with the exporters and export promoting committees because of which uh, there is a sudden boost in exports all right and also initiatives like local go global right which was one of the most important taglines of what atmanirbhar bharat program okay 
so this is just to give you an overview it is approximately 400.8 billion dollars of exports now it is a very very logical question that i am asking that our trade deficit our trade deficit is we just read our trade deficit is 189 billion dollars right this is our trade deficit our merchandise exports recorded 400.8 billion dollars all right so please mention it down in the comments below what should be our merchandise imports right recorded merchandise imports it's obviously a very very obvious answer but on my part i just need to check conceptual clarity from your side all right moving on to the next question we have which country has india signed a letter of agreement for with which country has india signed a letter of arrangement for education qualification recognition all right so answer this very very quickly one event that we have been discussing about in our previous current affairs videos as well and it has also been in news now right so we have a uh, India has signed a letter of of arrangement for EQR that is education qualification recognition with Australia right so obviously you all can guess now that it is because of India Australia virtual summit right virtual summit is ka ye second edition hai 2022 ka iska first edition kab hua tha the first edition was held in the year 2020 all right many other cooperations what we studied in the last video was the critical mineral supply chain cooperation worth of millions of dollars of supply chain was ensured in the field of critical minerals uh, critical minerals okay between the khanij bidesh india limited and australia's critical mineral uh, organization all right so this is an mou between prasar bharti which is a statutory autonomous body under the ministry of information and broadcasting all right and special broadcasting service of australia right so what will basically it will do right as the name suggest educational qualification recognition right so whatever suppose there is a student over here in india who is a ca all right and there is a job opportunity for a ca in australia all right so what basically this enables is that his professional degree or whatever degree or skill that a person has it will be officially recognized as valid in australia so what will it enable it will enable people to people exchange it will enable more job opportunities to students and both working professionals all right so it is very very important in that aspect and given the huge uh, the large amount of indian diaspora in australia we also have migration and mobility partnership agreement that enables the a smoother mobility between students and professionals right the inter country travel all right so you we all know that india and australia have very important historic ties they both have a common legacy of a shared british rule they both were a part of commonwealth nation they both fought for the independence all right now at present india is the fifth largest trade partner of australia all right so this is very very important another important fact is 29 artifacts including chola bronze statues jain sculptures and paintings have been repatriated to india by australia right so this process where ancient artifacts are returned to the home country because they were illegally smuggled or stolen this process is known as what it is known as cultural repatriation all right a similar cultural repatriation occurred in the year 2016 where the us returned hundreds of million dollars worth of indian artifacts back to india so obviously when indian artifacts are being returned back to india who will be the recipient agency you guys can guess obviously i understand that it would be archaeological survey of india will receive the ancient artifacts and then the archaeological survey of india will hand over the ancient artifacts to the temples of the respective state governments from where these artifacts belong all right this is a very important news keep it in mind these are 29 artifacts 
All right, so Center for Australia India Relations is to be established in Australia, of course, and it will administer Maitri Scholarship. All right, so Australia's Foreign Minister, uh, Australia's Foreign Minister has uh, commissioned worth twenty point eight million dollar fellowship programs under Maitri Fellowship. All right, these will be made available to Indian scholars for a period of four years. all right and of course it will enhance our cultural friendship and india will also participate in sydney energy forum for the year 2022 also it is very important to note that comprehensive economic agreement has also been a free trade agreement it is a free trade agreement between india and australia it is also doing rounds all right so it, australia is of course very very significant to uh, uh for uh, strategically also it is very important for india uh, with respect to indo pacific ocean also with respect to the supply of critical met uh, metals uh, critical minerals to counter the over dependence of rare earth minerals and critical minerals on china all right because india imports most of these critical minerals from china uh, be it uh, lithium or other rare earth metals also all right so this is a very very important uh, milestone in india australia relationship also you should know you should definitely know that there are many uh, bilateral arrangement between in, bilateral arrangements between india and australia one of which is very important is the 2 plus 2 uh, diplomacy 2 plus 2 diplomacy involves what involves the meeting of the foreign and defense ministers of both the respective nations all right so i leave it on to you guys to find out with which other countries has india signed a 2 plus 2 bilateral meeting or a 2 plus 2 diplomatic arrangement all right so of course australia will also support uh, india in its gaganyaan program other countries that are also supporting india in gaganyaan program include france and russia all right so of uh, Australia's Future Fund and NIIF also have uh, increased cooperation. All right. So these are some important facts. Next question: We have solar rooftop solar uh, capacity that will be added in residential areas under rooftop solar program of Phase Two. Right? How much uh, capacity will be added on the regi- residential areas? All right. so uh, let me tell you uh, the phase 2 uh, program it aims to add cumulative capacity of 40000 megawatt all right 40000 megawatts what cumulative capacity all right but here the question is asking you about residential areas all right here the question is asking about residential areas here the correct answer is can you guess it is 4000 megawatts all right so let's just see have a look at what solar uh, what uh, rooftop solar capacity basically is it is launched by the ministry of Re- uh, new and renewable energy and it has now entered its phase 2 right cumulative capacity we know how much it needs to add right this is only for residential programs it is 400 megawatt rooftop solar capacity all right and central financial assist, financial assistance will be provided in this program in the form of subsidies all right so what will basically the government do is that government will subsidize 40% of the benchmark cost extending up to 3 kilowatts of capacity 20% of the benchmark cost between 3 and 10 kilowatt capacity for individual households right but it, when it comes to uh, residential welfare associations that is communal households uh, subsidy up to 20% of the uh, maximum capacity will be provided by the government right extending till 500 kilowatt all right so basically uh, let me give you a short uh, information what basically is a solar rooftop solar plant all right rooftop solar plants are basically mini solar power plants right they can be installed over individual household right uh, uh, but they still do need a contiguous uh, piece of land so for example there is a 1 kilowatt 
पावर प्लांट वन किलोवर्ट कैपेसिटी इज मिनी सोलर पावर प्लांट इट विल नीड एट लीस्ट टेन मीटर स्क्वेयर एरिया और राइट सो टू इंस्टॉल मल्टीपल सोलर पावर प्लांट वी नीड अ कंटिन्यूस लैंड एरिया और राइट सो हाउ विल इट वर्क बेसिकली वॉट एवर डायरेक्ट करेंट और डी सी एनर्जी दैट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय सोलर पावर प्लांट्स वॉट एवर डी सी एनर्जी इज बींग प्रोड्यूस इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू ए सी एनर्जी और राइट यू नो डायरेक्ट करेंट एंड ऑल्टरनेटिंग करेंट यू मस्ट हैव रेड इट इन योर फिजिक्स क्लास राइट सो इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू ए सी एनर्जी बाय कंडीशनिंग पावर यूनिट्स और राइट सो दैट ए सी एनर्जी विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड बैक टू द ग्रिड राइट एंड देन दैट ग्रिड विल सप्लाई इलेक्ट्रिसिटी देन और राइट आई होप द वेरी बेसिक ऑन अ सर्फिस लेवल यू नो हाउ दिस विल वर्क राइट बिकॉज सी द नेचर ऑफ इट्स वर्किंग वट डज इट डू इट डज अवे विद द नीड ऑफ स्टोरेज कैपेसिटी राइट सो वेर एवर वी इंस्टॉल सोलर पावर प्लांट वी नीड टू स्टोर द एनर्जी दैट इज बीन जनरेटेड राइट सो इफ द डिस्कॉम्स विल कनेक्ट डायरेक्टली टू द सोलर रूफ टॉप सोलर प्लांट्स इट विल डू अवे विद द नीड ऑफ एडिशनल स्टोरेज कैपेसिटी टू स्टोर द एक्स्ट्रा एनर्जी और राइट वट विल बी इट्स बेनिफिट्स ऑफकोर्स फर्स्ट it will obviously complement india's intention uh, indc india's indc is to make sure that by 2030 by 2030 40% of our energy 40% of our energy is sourced from renewable energy uh, sources all right so this is a very major uh, thing right second second important benefit of this program it will be that it will ensure that peak load uh, during peak load during peak load when uh, there is an overburden on discoms and sometimes for some reason they fail to function or fail to supply regular uh, conventional source of electricity then uh, peak load timing will be reduced for discoms why because then they will have additional energy capacity uh, that is being generated to them by these rooftop solar power plants right and third most important thing is that because it will reduce the peak load timings for the discoms it will also reduce their distribution and transmission losses right which is distribution and transmission transmission losses of the discoms will be reduced to a great extent all right so rooftop solar power plant will be implemented by the discoms of the respective state governments obviously right so this will uh, incentives up to 10% of the cost will be provided to the discoms to encourage the scheme all right so as of now 3162 megawatt capacity for the residential sector has already been installed has reportedly been installed all right of this allocated uh, 3162 megawatt capacity 1252 megawatt has reportedly been installed as on 28th of february 2022 all right so moving on to the next slide we have how many artifacts just a revision question just to guess your attention just to catch your attention how many artifacts were returned by australia to india during this second virtual summit all right i will not tell you the answer you write it down in the comments below whatever is your correct answer you write it down in the comments below i want to see how much attentive you are during these lectures please uh, answer the question correctly down in the comments below how many artifacts were returned uh, by australia to india right now let me give you a brief insight on what kind of artifacts have been re uh, returned to india is one shiv bhairav one of the artifacts is a shiv bhairav uh, statue that belongs to rajasthan it is a 9th century statue all right one is a bronze sculpture one is a chola period bronze sculpture from tamil nadu right 11th to 12th ad right so just answer this question correctly moving on to the next slide who is the foreign minister of greece all right recently news the greece foreign minister recently visited india to discuss key issues 
key bilateral issues uh, surrounding what ukrainian crisis you all know the ongoing U ukrainian crisis another important issue that uh, greece wants to discuss with india is united nation convention on the laws of the seas which is the only existing international treaty in the world that classifies uh, maritime waters uh, among the nations all right i will tell you about it in a, a few minute another uh, very important issue uh, is indo pacific region establishing peace in the indo pacific region and also eastern mediterranean region right eastern mediterranean region write down in the comments below who is the prime minister of greece greece ka prime minister kon hai jaldi se comment karke bataiye now let's just discuss in brief about united nation convention on the laws of the seas so the treaty was signed for the first time in the year of 1982 right एंड आप सब इतना जान लो कि जितना भी ओशन है हमारे वर्ल्ड में वॉट एवर ओशन एरिया इज देयर इन द वर्ल्ड इट कैटेगराइज दैट ओशन इन फाइव टाइप्स राइट वन विल बी योर टेरिटोरियल वाटर राइट अनदर विल बी योर एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन वन विल बी योर हाई सीज और मैरे टाइम सीज राइट these are three broad categories but actually there are five categories i am forgetting the other two categories you should look it up or i will take it up in the next uh, class or something all right but you should know it is a very very important treaty and 167 countries has have already signed this treaty all right it is very important and very crucial for restoring world order it is very crucial for maintaining uh, the international sovereignty over the waterways all right waterways or the maritime routes okay how many skills hub does the center aim to establish across india another fact based one line of question skills hub india is a very comprehensive program in which uh, it various schools existing schools will collaborate with the skills uh, india mission all right and high technology uh, skills will be provided to the students so how many such skills hub will be established across india we have the correct answer here is 5000 skills hub will be established in india all right so 5000 of these 5000 skills hub these where will these be established uh, existing education infrastructure that is schools and colleges uh, that are already there and also infrastructure that is related to skills india mission that is already existing they will collaborate all right and these skills hub center will be established all right so many states have already implemented skills hub india all right so union minister uh, union minister of skill development and enterprise he is mr dharmendra pradhan ji all right okay moving on to the next slide we have how much stake does sbi own in ondc right open network for digital commerce how much stake does sbi own sbi has recently acquired an equity of 4.8 uh, sorry 7.84% right of an open source e-commerce for rupees 10 crores worth rupees 10 crores but sbi is only the second public sector bank that has acquired the stake the first public sector bank that invested in ondc as a promoter was punjab national bank uh, acquiring a stake of 9.5% all right and several private sector banks have also acquired stakes in ondc and ondc is, is established by a department for A promotion of industry and internal trade all right so um, let's discuss in brief about ondc ondc hai kya ondc is actually an open network as a name suggest an open network for digital commerce where small retailers not amazon not like amazon or flipkart but small retailers they can come on board on the ondc and they can uh, you know 
leverage the benefits of e-commerce industry and grow their respective businesses all right so o and dc will be your uniform system it will be your uniform system for all the small e-commerce or online retailers all right so because it will be a uniform system there will be no discrepancy there will be simplicity of operating the app or the website through which they can conduct the business right so what will it will also do it will also improve the ease of doing ease of doing business among small retailers all right it is a very very important scheme o and d c all right so moving on to the next slide we have which card uh, issuing company has launched co branded credit card in association with nature's basket all right so sbi card here is the correct answer sbi card has collaborated with nature's basket right so its basic aim would be what its basic aim would be to improve private consumption expenditure right जैसे आप लोग गूगल पे और पेटीएम यूज करते हैं और उससे आप जब भी कोई पेमेंट करते हैं तो फिर क्या होता है यू गेट कूपन्स यू गेट वाउचर्स टू स्पेंड योर मनी राइट टू बुक अ मूवी और टू गो टू अ मॉल एंड ईट समथिंग राइट टू डू ग्रोसरी शॉपिंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स सो अ सिमिलर इट इज अ सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ अ डील और राइट इट विल ऑफर द कस्टमर्स अ लॉट ऑफ लेवरेजेस एंड बेनिफिट्स right so sbi has uh, partnered with nature's basket all right so what will it do what do these things do ye kya karta hai ye consumption expenditure ko boost karta hai right these boost consumption expenditure they improve the economic health private consumption expenditure of individual consumers right they will obviously boost economic health why because it will also support businesses that have been facing a backlash uh, during the covid-19 pandemic all right so let's uh, know briefly very briefly about what nature's basket it nature's basket is basically an indian gourmet and grocery uh, brand right this gourmet and grocery brand it is headquartered in mumbai all right and it was recently acquired by spencers retail uh, agency spencers retailers recently acquired nature's basket in the year spencers retailers acquired nature's basket in the year 2019 okay Which bank has Chennai Super Kings has launched a co-branded credit card with? All right. So here the correct answer: Which bank has Chennai Super Kings launched a co-branded credit card with? Here the correct answer is ICICI Bank. All right. ICICI Bank and Chennai Super Kings have come together to uh, launch a co-branded credit card. all right and uh, the ceo of chennai super kings who is the ceo of chennai super kings you know k s vishwanathan is the ceo of chennai super kings right chanda kochar was the former ceo of icici bank she has been succeeded by whom write it down in the comments below all right headquarters of icici bank is in vadodara all right so this is a co branded credit card again it has all the similar facilities it will offer exclusive uh, facilities to its users of course uh, the buyers or the customers of this credit card will also get to attend a free practice session of the ipl all right moving on to the next slide who has won able price for the year 2022 all right so answer this question quickly and correctly so the correct answer here is dennis sullivan dennis sullivan has recently been awarded uh, the abel prize for mathematics in his field work for topology so basically topology is uh, a branch of mathematics that studies objects that do not change their structure aise kuch geometric objects hote hain for example 
the only known geometric object that does not stray, change its structure under even if it goes under a lot of stress a lot of pressure also it retains back to its shape it is known as the mobius strip right so he has done extensive work in the field for ex uh, for which he has been awarded abel prize right so abel prize uh, is given away by the king of norway all right it was uh, the idea was also the brainchild of norwegian government all right and it is based uh, on the standards of nobel prize award only all right so norwegian currency what is the norwegian currency it is kroner all right so he will get a cash award for this also all right so he is a graduate uh, sullivan is with graduate school and the university uh, center of the city university of new york all right so this is it for today i hope uh, the session was fruitful and helpful all right thank you so much for watching this video the link Uh, for our daily current affairs videos and the pdfs will be shared on our telegram channel the description of which is given down in the description the link for which is given down in the description box below all right thank you so much for watching uh, this uh, video till the end i hope you all uh, get some good insights and good knowledge and conceptual clarity after watching this all right see you in the next class prepare well study well stay healthy take care and bye bye